Oh my fit. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Cartoon episodes that traumatize children. Oh, when growing man. up, one thing we as kids loved doing was watching TV. Getting up early to watch Saturday. Wait, fair warning, this video will F you up. Oh, be careful, guys. If you want to watch this video, then I want to. I like that. I, I don't like getting effed up. I mean, I, I just like weird stuff. That at night to watch whatever was playing. I mean, These cartoons scary, gave horror. us dreams, expectations, and most of all, permanent memories. Though, some shows push the boundaries, causing us to remember the more disturbing side of said cartoon. Today, we will be talking about cartoon episodes that traumatized children. Okay. Oh, man. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Before hey! this one actually starts, I want to let you guys know that today, the day that you are watching this, at look 5 at this PM background. PST, we will be doing a live Q&A on my Discord server. So you can join and ask a question. It's going to be heavily moderated by my amazing team of mods. I also want to say that this video hey, is heavily my mods inspired are better. by Blame It On George. His link is down in the description. Make sure Blame to go subscribe to him. George. I love him. I look up to him as a creator. Hopefully one okay. day I can narrate for his channel because I know he invites a bunch of YouTubers to narrate for his videos. But yeah, oh, go subscribe cool. to him. I love him. Also, this list is in no particular order it's just the ones i wrote down with that being said make sure to grab a snack <gasps> oh grab a God! drink and he has the same light true look we have the same light let's get started with the video okay pingu's dream pingu Pingu was a Swiss-British stop-motion claymation children's show created by Otmar Gutman in 1987. The main character is a penguin called Pingu who lives in the South Pole along with his family and friends. The show aired on BBC Children's and Education and episodes averaged 5 minutes in length. Today, we will I be talking them. about Season 1, Episode 26. Pingu's dream. The episode starts off as normal, nothing out of the ordinary. Pingu's mom is reading him a bedtime story and okay. Pingu begins to drift away to sleep. He wakes up to the sound of his igloo jumping and before you know it, the igloo flies away. Then his bed extends its legs and it begins walking. I the camera cuts it. to this creepy walrus watching Pingu in his bed go about their day. Not to mention that okay, every time the walrus the pops up, music these in the background. are played. Just, it just gives you some uneasy feeling. Wait, that What's music up with things involving played? walruses being creepy? Like, what the, the directors keep showing the audience how the walrus is just watching Pingu. Eventually, the walrus makes his introduction. And you know how the directors made this already creepy character make his introduction to children? This is how. Oh my god. Okay, that is so creepy, bro. It's clear to see that the walrus is supposed to have this like goofy personality that finds everything funny and just wants to play. But they it really wasn't creepy when I was younger. Yeah. The walrus begins messing with Pingu and eats okay, his bed, all while creepy. nonstop laughing. Pingu and his bed begin running away, and Pingu ends up falling down oh, a hill no. of snow. It was actually a pretty cool transition because the next camera zooms out, and you can see that he's in his room again. The episode ends with Pingu oh, crying so he, and like, his mother consulting him. That. Yes. <laughs> That's how this episode ends. Not only is this the ending to the episode, but this was actually the season finale. This episode was highly controversial and was eventually banned from television due to the giant walrus being too scary and unsettling for many young viewers. The creator, Otmar Gutmann, actually used the same walrus model in a German short film he made years prior. This caught me off guard because the oh, voice man. he used for the walrus is so unexpected. Here, I'll just play the clip. Yeah, um, let's move on. Oh, man. Oh man, I don't know, but German cartoons and like they are creepy, bro. Old ones. The, 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 uh, man, I don't know. Fun. Let's move on the list. Even when you think about uh, fairy tales, like the German ones are really scary fairy tales. Disney used those, like Snow White and other things, and changed the story and made it all magical. The original ones are terrible. They like Blue Cat kids. Blues, Tom and Jerry. Tom and Jerry need no introduction. I'm 100% yeah, sure Grimm everyone brothers. watching this video knows exactly who these two are. Blue Cat Blues is about Tom's love for a female cat, which doesn't love him back. The video yeah. begins with a quote by Jerry's the narrator one, right? while watching Tom sit on the train tracks, patiently waiting for the train Aww. to come by. The quote is, oh, no. poor Tom. In a few minutes, it'll all be over. Oh, and for no. the first time since he met her, he'll be happy. Poor, miserable, oh, lovesick no. creature. I suppose people will say I should have helped him. I know. 
but it's better this way. Talk oh, about no. a kid's show getting dark. Throughout the episode, yeah. we see just how much Tom is in love with this cat and how he is overthrown by another cat by the name of Mr. Butch. The cat with more money, more gifts, a better car. Tom resorts to drinking milk, which in this episode is a substitute for alcohol. alcohol Tom is seen yeah. sliding down a gutter until Jerry saves him. They get splashed by some water and come to find out it's Mr. Butch and the love of Tom's life riding away in his car with it a just, just married sign. After this, the same thing happens to Jerry as his girlfriend is riding away with another mouse. Jerry brings himself down to the train tracks, sits next to Tom, and both patiently wait for the train to pass by. The episode ends with the haunting horn of a train. This episode yeah. was banned by Cartoon Network and Boomerang due to its references to alcohol and... Also, I just want to clear mm. up a common misconception, and that is that this is actually the finale to the series. It's not. Yeah. Man's best friend, Ren and Stimpy. Ren and Stimpy ran on Nickelodeon from 1991 to 1996 and focused on a sociopathic chihuahua and a clueless cat. This show got away with it. so much shit, it's actually scary. Season 2, episode 4 opens up with a man by the name of George Licker adopting Ren and Stimpy at a pet store. Once he takes them home, he puts them through a bunch like of clips? rigorous tasks to see if they can keep up with how he wants his ideal pets to act. In one scene, he forces Stimpy to get on his couch so that he can learn how to be quote unquote disciplined and, well, just watch. Oh no, so me. Oh my god. That's a good boy. I have no idea how Nickelodeon let the show air in the first place. Eventually, George says that his pets need to learn how to attack. So he puts on this padded bite suit and Stimpy is reluctant due to him being his owner. Ren, on the other hand, takes full advantage <laughs> of this and begins beating the ever-living shit oh, out of George no. with a paddle. So much so that George's head does a full 360 and right eyeball falls out of its socket. Ew. Ren continues on his rampage and just doesn't stop beating this man to a pulp. It even shows George with X's for eyes. And we all know what that means. Though he actually didn't die, it's still quite disturbing to add that little detail. But the disturbing yeah. parts of this episode don't end there. George climbs out of his suit, breathes like a maniac, and congratulates Ren on being a true champion. The episode ends with all three characters dancing. Is he eating poop? Yeah. Now, this episode actually never ended up airing on Nickelodeon. It was banned once they uh, saw what it actually contained. But this episode was moved to Ren and Stimpy Adult Party Cartoon. And that show was basically a revival of the original, except with very sexual... It was just a cigar. very sexual oh, okay. show. I mean, if the creator went from making a kid's show and turning that kid's show yeah, into like, a Yeah, like, the thing about it, you guys, when we are kids, we don't find these references. We don't understand them. For us, it's just funny. Even, like, beating up uh, in cartoons when they fight, it's funny, you know? Like, it's never taking, like, as an abuse or anything like that. I mean, I guess we could see where his mind was. Anyway, we could tell that this creator was trying to go with this dark humor, but it just ended up being super creepy for kids, and it was not the right move. Maybe creepy for Teeth for two, ups. Cat Dog. Cat Dog ran for seven years oh. on Nickelodeon from 1998 to 2005. That's you may also recognize I Dog's voice it. since it's Tom because Kenny. Because I never had voice Nickelodeon actor. as a child. Teeth for Two is actually a fun concept for an episode where whenever one of them does something, the other one feels it. Except it revolves around teeth. Look, I hate the dentist already. Yes, I do go. But just the fact that there's drills in your mouth, mm, pause. I hate no, bro. it too. I just hate the smell, the, the sound. So anyway, the dentist tells them that the food they eat affects the other's teeth, resulting in cat's teeth to become brown and withered. Cat tries to convince Dog to start eating healthy, but ah. then turns into a battle seeing who can do more damage to the other oh, seat. No. Cat chews on ice Ew. and Dog chews on foil. Later that night, Dog is asleep mm. and Cat attempts to brush his teeth. He is unable to do so because of all the food in his mouth. So what's the next best option? That's right. Traveling inside of their own body to come out as an inside-out cat out of Dog's mouth. Ew, what the hell does that even mean? Oh. Oh my god. Ew, you guys! Dog screams of horror and swallows Cat back down to where he's supposed to be. Skipping to the end, they get their teeth fixed, but end up getting food allergies from all the junk they ate throughout the entire episode. Never thought I'd see an inside-out cat oh trying to brush god. a dog's teeth. That is actually Knuckles and creepy. his hilarious problem. 
The Misadventures of Flapjack. The Misadventures of Flapjack was another show that got away with so much disturbing shit. Personally, as a kid, I loved it just because it was so gross and I thought that was so funny back in the day. I remember pausing it at those funny still frames of like really detailed, oh my God. zoomed in pictures of the characters' faces. Anyway, season two, episode four Actually, is Knuckles and his hilarious problem. This episode like, is about really addiction. Artistic. More specifically, Knuckles' addiction to candy, which has the effects of alcohol, from feeling warm and happy, uh, angry at the world, to depression. The next yep. morning, after Knuckles ingests a bunch of candy, Flapjack realizes that Knuckles has become addicted to the candy, so much so that he hallucinates, Aww. sees Flapjack as a lollipop, oh, no. and tries eating him. Next, Knuckles Drugs begins guys, manipulating do Flapjack them. and tells him that he's just fine and he can trust him. Though, this only leads to two candy rampages where he steals from homes, babies, Aww. and a gumball machine. Then we go to this depressing scene showing just how this candy addiction has left Knuckles. Getting kicked out of the candy trough, being used so as alcohol, a doormat, yeah. and taking any bit of candy he can get, even if it's from a stranger's mouth. Ew, ew, don't eat that, don't eat that, don't eat that, don't eat that, yeah, don't eat that, don't eat that, don't eat that. Bubby decides to send Knuckles off to isolation on a piece of the boardwalk into the sea. Here, Knuckles begins hallucinating and imagines a giant flapjack putting his arms inside of his mouth oh and vomiting God, like candy an into it. Ew. Very dark episode if you think about it, especially seeing just how bad the effects of candy have left Knuckles. I really mm -hmm. like the episode though, it really makes you aware of just how bad alcohol or any addiction can be. True. That's true. Earth Mover. Batman Beyond. Batman Beyond released Hi, in 1999 and aired on Cartoon Network and WB Kids. Today we're going to be talking about Season 1, Batman Episode 15, aka one? Earth Mover. We start okay. with this teenage girl by the name of Jackie hanging with her friends, one of which is Terry McGinnis, aka the Batman after the original Bruce Wayne Batman. She explains okay. that she's been feeling like she was followed and washed by someone. Soon after that, Terry sees a mysterious figure outside through the window. A chase begins, but the figure isn't caught. The next day, Jackie's adopted father gives all three of them a ride, but first he says he wants to show them something. That being a piece of land he plans on buying okay. and placing a factory on. An earthquake happens and again, there is another oh. fight scene. After this, Bill, her oh. adopted father, explains that he thinks it might be Jackie's real father looking for him. He tells the story from oh. many years ago and while he was trying to dump toxic waste into an abandoned mine shaft, the wire pulling up the container got stuck oh. on a piece of wood and resulted in the entire yeah, mine shaft okay. collapsing in on itself. Jackie's father it. was at the bottom and ended up being crushed by the debris. Okay. Not only that, but was covered by the toxic waste. Everyone okay. assumed that he died instantly and Bill felt so bad that he ended up adopting Jackie who was only a kid at the time. Fast forward into the episode okay. and the earth mover has trapped both Jackie and Bill underground. During this scene, Jackie finds out what her oh, father actually Oh, he said sadly I got like. copyrighted. And Stupid YouTube. Well, man. Like we just want to see it. Not like we're so like go the and text was saying, video. I can't show too much due to a copyright claim. Yeah. But basically, Jackie is horrified seeing that this is her father. This I mean, who it? wouldn't be? Look at the Ew. way they drew it. Yeah, that's basically the scene in a nutshell. I mean, even listen to that voice. It sounds like he's struggling Poor to get kids, his words man. out. He seems to think that Bill betrayed him and left him to die so that he didn't have to split the revenue with a partner. He also sees Bill <laughs> adopting Jackie as her getting stolen from him. Imagine Maybe. accidentally dying and then the friend that accidentally killed you adopts your daughter. Bro. Eventually, Batman swoops in and saves the day. Oh my god. Oh the episode god. ends with this very dark quote. My father. He's not your father. Not really. He's a ghost. Dad. Mooch Master P, Mr. Meaty. Mr. Meaty aired That's from 2006 that. to 2009 and was canceled due to a mix of that. low ratings and criticism Mr. from adults Meaty. and vegetarians who protested against the show. Honestly, the uh, show is very lucky. Did he just say that they protested about it because it's meaty? 2009 and was canceled due to a mix of low ratings and criticism from adults and vegetarians who protested vegetarian against the show. Honestly, the show is very lucky it even lasted three years considering how ugly all of the characters were. Yeah, the actually, show followed it's fast scary. food workers Josh and Parker through their audit adventures. Season 1 episode 6 begins with Parker and quote unquote mooching off of everyone and eating their food. Josh gets annoyed and tricks him into eating this a raw patty. Then scary. weird things start happening. Like all of the food Parker is about to take a bite out of disappear. Josh records it with a I camcorder wish my food and slows disappears down the like footage. That. Then we see that a giant no, actually, tapeworm is sad. living inside of Parker eating all of his food. They decide to get rid of the tapeworm the only way they know how. Fishing it out of Parker's stomach. They do end up getting it out and an Australian man comes by and says he'll buy it for his zoo. Though he doesn't take it to the zoo. Instead, he uh, he swallows it whole in front of them. Here we go. Come on in. Ah. Ew. Ew, 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 ew. Ew. Oh, that's the stuff. Ew. And says she tickles on the way down. 
Ew. Wow. Okay. King Ramsey's Curse slash Remembrance of Courage Past. Courage the Cowardly Dog. This list would not be complete without mentioning Courage the Cowardly Dog. I could go on and on about all the creepy monsters that gave kids nightmares throughout in the entirety of the series, but I want to mention the one that stuck with me the most, and that's King Ramsey's Curse. In this episode, Eustace does not want to return a historical slab because he hears on the news it. that it's worth $1 million. A person from the museum it belongs never, to I know, comes over I know to take the it memes. back and offers Eustace a tote bag. Really, my guy? I'm pretty sure you could and some, get it back like, sexual for free. Then the door gets so slammed good. on him. When it becomes nighttime, they hear a creak at the door and check outside. Then we get King Ramses, who just keeps repeating, return the slab or suffer my curse. Return the slab. What? Return the slab or suffer my curse. It's just such a creepy design, and also it's a 3D model in a 2D yeah. animated show. There's so many instances of just plain creepy stuff in this cartoon, but that's what gave it its charm. I feel like Courage the Cowardly True. Dog definitely let oh young kids God. know it, whether they like the horror genre. So, shout out to Courage the Cowardly True. Dog for that. I also want to talk about another it does episode have a called lot of Remembrance horror. of Courage Past, which is actually the second to last episode of the entire series. This episode is about Courage's parents, which sadly got taken away from him at an early age due to an Aww. evil veterinarian. This veterinarian puts Courage's parents Me. in a rocket ship, and Courage can't do anything because he's just a pup. While being chased, Courage hops into the garbage disposal and escapes. He watches as his parents are sent off to space and waves oh, goodbye. No. We see how Courage is adopted by Muriel and why she decides to name him Courage. Meanwhile, in the present day, the same thing is about to happen to Muriel and Eustace, but luckily, Courage is oh. able to save the day and send the veterinarian oh, to space this time. Ends? In space, he finds himself with all the other dogs he has experimented oh, on, including Courage's parents. Dessert. <laughs> mm -hmm. Although dogs don't survive, don't live that long. Those you two know, episodes fun never fact, my like, mind. for dogs, we humans are like... Um, we're like elves. We live so long and for them like our human life is so long because what they live 15 years or something. So yeah, I feel like they look at us like we look at elves. I, yeah, I think about those episodes to this day. Jurassic Bark, Futurama. This is a little bonus I'm throwing in. The reason I'm throwing this in as a bonus is because one, Futurama wasn't really made for kids. It was a show for young adults. And two, I don't think this episode traumatized anyone. It was just incredibly sad. And if you're a fan of Futurama, you already know what I'm talking about. This episode, Jurassic Bark, was the hardest one to rewatch for me. This episode is about Fry's old dog from 1997 Aww. named Seymour. In case you guys don't know, Futurama takes place in the year 3000 with Fry being the only person from the year 2000. Since he accidentally fell a into bit, a cryogenic really chamber, on New Year's it, Day. Like anyway, Fry episode. finds Seymour as a fossil in a museum where he then takes home to the professor. The professor explains that he can actually bring back Seymour with new technology, and so Fry begins getting ready for Seymour's return. This includes a doggy bed, a collar, and some chew toys. When the professor Aww. is ready to bring back Seymour, Bender throws his body into a pit of lava <gasps> because he's jealous that Fry will have a new best friend. So we get a flashback mean. of Seymour doing everything in his power to find Fry. Seymour eventually finds Fry, but no one in the lab notices that Fry is in there. Even his parents who go to pick up Seymour. Talk about frustration. Aww. Anyway, Bender jumps into the lava pit and retrieves Seymour's body. Seymour didn't burn due to the material covering his body. The professor finds out that Seymour actually lived his full lifespan of 15 years, 12 Aww. years after Fry's disappearance. So Fry decides not to bring him back simply because he doubts Seymour or even remembers him and he probably moved on with but another family does. but wait here's the kicker we the audience get a fl i don't understand why is he not speaking what happened to the audio oh go follow me. oh he, the whole what happened to this you can't do or that even remembers him and he probably I'm moved on with on another CC. family but wait Here's the kicker. We, the audience, get a... I understand there is, like, but there is something on YouTube where you can uh, mute the audio of the video in the background, but don't mute your voice. Oh, no, but what happened? What happened? Do you know what happened? He waited all 12 years in front. January 2nd, 2000. He would always come back and wait. Oh, but why did he not come here to find him? The whole time he didn't even 
find another episode was actually family. nominated for an Emmy in 2003, oh which, you know, that's just how good the episode was. Sadly, it did not win the Emmy. Uh, the Simpsons beat it out, which is also made by Matt Groening. So, Matt Groening, good on you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this episode tore this, my heart it out. It was so sad. And the fact that there is a story about this one dog who lost his... Um, who lost his keeper and uh, because of old age and he would always go back to their bench and always stay there. I think that's that's the story and they made a whole statue in Japan, Hachiko, Hachi, Hachi. Okay, that one. See, I don't know exactly what happened, but I know that they made a statue because he it. was so loyal. I hope you guys enjoyed died. that video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and make sure to subscribe to the channel. We're almost at 200,000 so subscribers. There's a movie? Make sure to go follow me on all my socials, Instagram, Twitter. Was go it subscribe to my second Hanks? channel. Join the Discord server because we're going to be talking later today. And even if you're watching this video on the day that I didn't upload it, it's okay. I, sometimes I join the voice good channels job. and I just really talk to you guys when I'm... Really good job. I like this type of videos and I do plan to make some type of videos like this as well i mean it is it is a bit more difficult to make those and edit those but it's very rewarding to have this type of videos sharing things that um i like and i am enthusiastic about and i started with that on the anime channel my my bunny mate channel where i do talk a lot more about some animes especially right now focusing a bit more on one piece and there is a lot of commentary type of videos there as well Oh, I'll keep you